Let's continue with <coughs> working out these problems. Take a look at number four. Um, you can work along. There's a few, few other parts we'll get to, but let me just keep it up here. And you can pause it on that <laughs> if you wanted to look at that. But let's just work work through it. Okay, so this is supposed to be a, a sort of a very simple but key example of why the gradient and df really are better, uh, or why the gradient, why the df is better, why they're really different, even though they seem to, they have the same information content, but it really is a better way to pr pre uh, present it. So we're just going to look, it's really about how they interact and change of variables. And I mentioned this before um, about scale factors and change of variables, um, sort of in an informal way, but let's do a really specific example. So we've got this map T, and it just doubles everything, or in other words, it scales times 2. <coughs> T of uv is 2u, 2v, and that's going to be the xy coordinates. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I'm going to have a function here, g, oh, sorry, the function is going to be here, actually. And it's just going to be g of uv is just u, okay, just the first coordinate function. Okay, so what does this mapping look like? Well, the origin goes to the origin. Uh, 1, 0 goes to 2, 0. Same with 0, 1 goes up to here. 1, 1 goes to 2, 2. So like this square goes to this square. It just blows everything up, magnifies by a factor of 2, okay? Now the level sets of g, oh, those are just these guys. Oh, I should have said the integer level sets, because we really want to be careful here about scale. So there's the integer, integer level sets of G. Now, where do those get mapped to? Well, these guys, this is the set where all the U's are 1. That's going to go over to here. And then where U is 2, that's going to go to 4. And then it's going to go to, like, minus 2. So the spacing is doubled, as we'd expect. Okay, um, and oh, is this the le did this the level sets of some function f? Let's see. These certainly look like level sets. They're non-intersecting a non-intersecting family of curves. Okay, this is f of x y equals. Well, it's not x because remember this is the one level set. The one level set of this guy turned into here. That's at x equals two. The two level set got mapped over to here. Ah, okay. So this is actually x over two. And that, so that's saying there's an L, the geometric correspondence. If we define f to be this way and g to be this way between their level sets, that should correspond to an algebraic uh, correspondence. That's what I'm asking in C here. Um, <coughs> and indeed, f of t of u v, that's the kind of thing we can do. If there's this, there's this function f to r here. OK, so if I start here and I go over to here and then go to the real numbers with f, that gives me a function to r. Oh, that should be the same thing as g, hopefully, if these really correspond. And indeed, it, of course it does. f of 2u, 2v. Well, I take the x coordinate and divide by 2. Oh, yeah, that's u. And that's just g of uv. OK, so in both ways, geometric and algebraic, f and g are corresponding functions. f and g are just the chain, the, it's just a change of variables, exactly like in an integral. This is, would be if you're integrating function f here or function g here. They're related by this, this scaling, OK? So what about vectors? If we're going to think about gradients, we want to think about how vectors transform under this, this transformation. And that's easy. <coughs> Let's draw v equals 1, 0, just i, really, OK? There's v with, a, with an arrow. That's not the, the, uh, the uh, it's different from the variable v here, OK? What should the corresponding vector be? Well, we haven't talked a lot about pushing forward vectors through transformations explicitly, although we really have done it implicitly with things like um, velocity curves and things like that. But there's a simple way. This is the arrow from 0, 0 to 1, 0. One zero. It should transform to the this arrow. And does that make sense? Well, yeah, this is the doubling map. It just takes this arrow and it scales everything by 2. So that really is the right notion of the corresponding vector. And let's say, actually, I don't think I gave that a name. Let's call that, uh, well, u seems a little weird. Let's say w. 
Okay. So these vectors correspond just like these level sets correspond, just like these functions and these formulas correspond. Okay. Just two different worlds, a translation between the two. Okay. So everything seems fine right now. All right. But here's where the problem comes. Okay. So, <coughs> excuse me. This vector v, that is equal to the gradient of our very simple function g evaluated at 0, 0. Because g, this is just u, okay, so gradient of g is just 1, comma, 0. And that's v. Hmm, okay, so, so far so good. Alrighty. Um, but we'd like to also calculate the gradient of f. That's supposed to be essentially the same information as g, just translated. Okay, well, let's see if I can squeeze it in somewhere here. I can put it, I don't need this check anymore. Okay, so we've got the gradient of g is this v vector is 1, 0. The gradient of f, that's easily calculated at 0, 0. It's, it's a constant gradient, so it doesn't really matter, but at 0, 0 is going to be 1 half, comma, 0. 1 half times i. Let's make that angle bracket better. Okay, this, this would be this guy. Let me draw it in red. That's the gradient of f. That is not w. That is not the vector that corresponds to v. This is what this does. Is it makes precise the observation I had in the very first video, which is it's strange that the arrows for the gradient get bigger when the level sets get closer together. And this is a very explicit example of that. Here, the level sets are getting farther apart under our change of variables, but the gradient is getting shorter, and so they don't match anymore. This arrow matched exactly the level set. Its corresponding arrow should match the level set, but that's not the, the gradient of the function. Okay, So the upshot is that what I'd like to be true is false. The gradient The gradients of two corresponding functions, functions that are just related by a change of variables, do not correspond. And by that, I mean when I do the very natural operation of taking this arrow and just putting it on this picture by just magnifying it by a factor of 2, it's not the same as the gradient of f. Okay, So that's a problem. That's really something that's not good. What about um, df? Okay, Remember the pictorial version. So if you look at f and g now, now that I've scrolled through the whole problem, read that <coughs> and pause for a second. Um, our picture of df is exactly these level sets. That's exactly, I mean, we just draw the level sets and we declare that's it. That's, that's the one form. That's our pictorial version of it. Okay, And dg, it is the level sets. I don't add this extra funky arrow to describe that we have to do for the gradient. I just stare at the level sets and I say, that's sufficient. That is it. That's df and that's dg. And of course they correspond under t. That was the very first thing we did, is the reason we actually drew these to be the way they are is that we just pushed them forward by t. We just took all these sets and just saw where they went to under t. And then we created the function f out of that and everything. But the level sets are more intimately tied to the functions f and g and the fact that they correspond under the change of variables than these funky arrows are that we are supposedly supposed to do for the gradient. OK, so that's what I mean by you've already drawn the pictures. There it is. The level sets are drawn, and they correspond. And then g, take a look at that for a second. If we want to be a little bit, if we don't like this pictorial stuff, it's like, eh, that doesn't sound rigorous. Well, it's, it is kind of hard to make it rigorous, to be honest. but. Um, but it's still very meaningful. Um, what about algebraically? <coughs> In the last few videos, we've been using this yoga of pulling back a function, or a one form and a function. And the assertion was that the t star commutes with the d. There's a naturality property of the, the d operation. And this is really at the heart of things. The naturality means exactly that the picture here under change of variables will correspond with the picture here, which fails for the gradient. Okay, Let's see, what is t star f? Let's see. This, well, let's, what is the left-hand side? It says take df, which is basically the, the picture is the level sets here, and pull it back to be a one form over here. Is that the same as the level sets we already have, which is d of g? Okay. Well, let's see. So t star df is d t star f. What is t star on a function? Remember, that was just a fancy way of saying f composed with t. Oh, hey, 
the reason, the, the, the explicit way to say that f and g correspond as functions here is to say that f composed with t is g. And so indeed, df are these level sets, this picture one, of a one form. When we drag it back and produce the corresponding thing over here, we do get the level sets of g. So f and g correspond, and their differentials correspond. The one forms correspond. And that's a precise way of saying that this is really better than the gradient. You might not think that this is a big deal, but change of variables is a huge important tool. Um, it was one of the most advanced things we do, but it becomes one of your absolute basic tools the further you go in this kind of calculus. Um, and especially when you get to uh, things like differential geometry, manifolds, a lot of stuff that's useful in physics, um, the absolute bedrock of that is that everything you do needs to respect change of variables, and it will utterly fail if, if you don't.